In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your very first auto landscape material. This will allow you to quickly and automatically texture very large landscapes. And this tutorial is going to be a complete introduction on how to get your very first auto landscape material started. I'm going to show you which node you need to use that will perform all the functions for you, how to use that node. We're going to start off with just two solid colors. So we get things started and then we're going to swap them for textures. Then I'm going to show you how to add in normal maps, how to add in roughness and how to utilize the material instance. So you can swap the textures to anything you want to extend the functionality of this one auto landscape material. So let's begin. Here I already have a landscape created and I generated this from terrain party. The size of this terrain is one square kilometer. And even though it's not that large, if I had to paint textures on this manually, it would take a few hours, if not a couple of days. And I really don't want to do this manually. There's a lot of information here. It would just be a waste of time. And what I do want to have is an auto material that would procedurally apply to textures on this entire landscape based on slope. So I would have one texture on flat surfaces. And when the terrain changes at a certain angle, it would switch to another texture. And this is done with auto materials. So the first thing I'm going to do is organize my folder structure. I'm going to create a new folder where I'm going to store this material in. I'm going to create a new folder inside this folder. I'm going to right click, new folder, and I'm going to name this materials. And now inside this folder, this is where we create our auto material. So go to add new and choose material. You can name this anything you want. And I'm going to name mine as MAT underscore first auto mat. And right away before I do anything inside this material, I'm going to go ahead and create a material instance from it. A material instance will allow you to expand the functionality of this master parent material to extend to material instances. So this way you can use the material instance, change parameters, change textures, and reuse the material instance over and over again on different terrains without having to go inside the master material to update the parameters in there. Plus, it's a lot faster for you to change the parameters via the material instance. It's a very common technique used in UE4. So I'm going to right click on this material and choose create material instance. I'm going to rename it. So the prefix will be MI underscore and the name of the material. And we will come back to the material instance later. But to set everything up and all the parameters that will be propagated into the material instance, we have to create them inside the material editor. So double click on the material to open up the material editor. And let's begin to create our outer material. The first node we need in the foundation of outer landscape material is the world align blend node. So right click on the empty space and search for world aligned blend. And it's this node right here. Left click on it to insert it. The two important properties inside this node that you want to control is blend sharpness and blend bias. Blend sharpness will control the blend between two textures. And blend bias will control the slope or the incline where one texture will switch to another. And one thing to note right now that the blend bias number the value that controls the slope has to be kept in the negative range. And I'll show you what that means in a bit. So to control sharpness and bias, we can do that with a constant one vector. I'm going to right click in the empty space and search for constant. And I'm going to insert this constant one vector. And a shortcut key for this, if you hold one and left click, this will also insert the constant one vector. Then I'm going to take this one and plug it into blend sharpness. And then plug the second one into blend bias. And now I want to define some default values to start with. So for the first one, I'm going to select it and then give a value of 15. And for blend bias, this is the one that has to be negative. I'm going to give this one a negative five. All right. So now we have this set up. Next, to make this world align blend work, we need a LERP, a linear interpolate. I'm going to hold down L and left click to insert a LERP. Then I'm going to take the alpha output 
from the World Online Blend and connect it into the LURPS Alpha. And then take the LURP output and connect it into the base color of the material. And you can already see in the preview that we have some results. And the black and white color that you see is currently being driven from the LURP A and B. Since we have nothing connected into them, the LURP is displaying the black and white values. The value of A is set to 0, which is black, and the value of B is set to 1, which is white. And then where this change between white and black appears is set by the World Align Blend from Blend Sharpness and from Blend Bias. And then eventually we are going to plug in something into A and B so we have some color, some textures, rather than the black and white values. But as of right now, this is the basic fundamental outer landscape material. This right here will work on your terrain. Now, before I test this out inside the map on the terrain, I'm going to go ahead and convert the two constant vectors to a parameter so they appear inside the material instance. This way we can change them on the fly in real time rather than I have to come back into this material and compile if we adjust any numbers. So I'm going to right click on the constant one vector and choose convert to parameter. And I'm going to name this blend sharpness. And the other one is going to be blend bias. And the default values will stay the same, which is fine. That's what I want. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and save. And let's apply this onto our terrain. I'm going to select the landscape. And inside the details panel, I'm going to scroll down under landscape material. And I can search for the material instance to apply to this terrain. And make sure you apply the material instance rather than the master material itself. Or you could just left click and drag the material instance right onto the landscape material slot. And this will apply to the terrain. And you can already see the results. We are having the black and white values appear on the terrain. The white is more on the flatter surfaces and the black appears more on the inclined, on the angled parts of the terrain. Now these are just the default values. So if I double click on the material instance to open this up, we have the two parameters we want to enable and we can adjust them. Blend sharpness and blend bias. And remember, again, blend sharpness controls the blend sharpness between the two textures. And the blend bias controls the slope or the angle where the one texture, or right now the color, changes to a second color or to a second texture. So if you want to make the color or the texture appear on a less inclined angle, then you would change and adjust the blind bias, which again has to be kept in a negative value. This is very important, otherwise it will not work. So the blend sharpness is in the positive range and blind bias has to be kept in a negative range. And the two values play off of each other. So you have to tweak both of them to find the results that you're looking for on your terrain. And every terrain will be different depending on what kind of height map you have. All right, so we have this set up now and it works. And next, let's change the colors from black and white to something else. I'm going to go back into the material editor. And to start things off, I'm going to use solid colors first before having a texture. For this, I'm going to use a constant three vector. I'm going to right click an empty space, search for constant, and insert a constant three vector. A shortcut key is hold down three and left click. I'm going to plug in the first one into LURP A and the second one into LURP B. And now I want to select each one and define a default color. The color or the node that's plugged into LURP A is the slope color. This will appear on the angle on the incline of the terrain. And the color or the node that's plugged into LURP B will appear on the flat surfaces of the terrain. So go ahead and choose the color that you want to appear on the incline, on the angle, and on the flat parts of the terrain. And before we test this out, I'm going to right click on each of the constant three vectors and convert them to a parameter. I'm going to name the first one color 1 and the second one color 2. And now let's go ahead and hit apply and save. So now instead of having the black and white values that come from LURP, 
we now have input of a solid color into lerp A and into lerp B. And because we converted each of the constant three vectors into a parameter, we can go into our material instance and quickly adjust the solid color to whatever we like. Now, of course, this is a solid color and not a texture, but this is just a start. This was to show you that we now can have inputs into lerp A and into lerp B. And now let's go ahead and replace the solid colors with an actual texture. I'm going to select both constant three vectors and delete them. And for the textures, I'm going to use starter content. There are a couple of terrain textures that are pretty good. But of course you can use Quixel to have a lot of great terrain textures to use. So the first one I'm going to use is the ground, gravel, and the grass. Left click on one to select it, and you can hold down control to add to a selection. And then I'm going to left click, hold and drag both of them into the material editor. I'm going to place the dirt on top, since this will be our slope color, our slope texture. And the grass will be on the bottom, which will be for flat parts of the terrain. And I'm going to plug in the dirt into lerp A, and the grass into lerp B. And you can already see it's working. I'm going to go ahead and convert both of the textures to a parameter. This way I'll be able to swap the textures to anything else I want. I'm going to right click on each one and choose convert to parameter. The first one, the top one, will be named albedo1. And the second one will be named albedo2. And of course you can name this anything you want. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply save and let's take a look and it's working if i zoom a little closer you can see the grass texture and the flat surfaces of the terrain and the dirt appears on the incline on the angle parts of the terrain and right now we have a problem with texture tiling but that's something easily fixed by using a landscape coordinate node and i'm not going to show you how to do this in this video i covered that in one of the previous videos and in a landscape essentials course. Since this isn't a focus of this tutorial, I'm not gonna cover it here. But the textures are working perfectly. Now, of course, albedo textures by themselves are not enough. And we need to add in normal maps. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna need to use normal maps that match the dirt and the grass. So I need to jump back into starter content, into textures folder, and select the appropriate normal maps. One for the grass and one for the dirt. And I'm going to left click hold and drag both of them into the material editor. And the important part here is to place them in the same way that you have the albedo textures. So here I have dirt on top, grass on the bottom, and I want to position the normal maps the same way so I know what they are. And next, I need to perform the same function as I do with the albedo textures. I need a lerp. So I'm going to hold down L, left click to insert a linear interpolate. I'm going to connect the dirt into lerp A and the grass normal map into lerp B. And then the output of the lerp will go into the normal map input of the material. And for the alpha input of the lerp, we're going to use the same world align blend. But with additional normal maps, this gets a little bit tricky. If I take the alpha output from the world align blend and plug it into the lerp alpha input, this will not work. It will give you an error. So the alpha output cannot be used on the lerp's alpha input, not for the normal maps. Well, that's okay because there are two other outputs from the world align blend, one with vertex normals and the other one is with explicit normals. These were specifically designed to be used for normal maps. So great, so we can use one of those. But I'm about to show you there's going to be a little problem with artifacts showing up on your textures. So I'm going to go ahead and take the most commonly used output for normal maps, which is with vertex normals. I'm going to take the output from the world align blend and connect it into the alpha input of the lerp. No errors. So everything seems to be working okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and let's take a look inside the map. If I get a little closer, you can see that we have some artifacts showing up in the blend between the two textures and just does not look good. So to fix this and to avoid the artifacts, we need to plug with vertex normals also into the alpha input of the lerp for the albedo textures. So if you're going to use normals for your auto landscape material, which you will most likely will, then you need to use with vertex normals output from the world align blend for both albedo and normal maps. And now if I go ahead and hit apply, go back into the map, the artifacts are now gone and the blend is correct. Now one more step, I'm going to go ahead and convert the two normal map texture samples to a parameter. The first one will be named normal1 and the second one is normal2. So this way, if you ever need to change a texture to something else, you'll be able to do so for the albedo and for the normal map. Next, we need to take care of the roughness on our terrain. Right now, if I look towards the light, our entire landscape is very shiny. It's reflecting a lot of light. So we need to clamp it down and we need to control this. So let's go back into the material editor. And for this, we're going to use two console one vectors. I'm going to create more space and let's insert a scalar parameter. Scalar parameter is a console one vector that has been already converted to a parameter. To do that, just hold down S key and left click to insert the scalar parameter. The first one I'm going to name roughness one and the second one is going to be named roughness two. Right away, I want to define a default value. So I'm going to select them both and enter 0.9 as the default value. Then I need a lerp. Hold down L and left click. I'm going to connect roughness 1 into lerp A, roughness 2 into lerp B, and the lerp output into the roughness input of the material. And then to control where the roughness for 1 and 2 are going to appear, we're just going to use the same world align blend we're using for the albedo and the normal map. So everything is going to be consistent. And I'm going to use with vertex normals output and connect it into the alpha input of the roughnesses lerp. Let's hit apply and take a look. All right, it's looking pretty good. Let's bring up the material instance editor. And I can go ahead and enable roughness 1 and 2 and tweak its values to make the grass or the dirt texture more reflective, more shiny, or more rough. And then of course we have our albedo 1 and 2 that we can swap to any texture we want. And of course if you're going to swap an albedo texture, you should also do the same thing for the normal map so they match. And at this point, this is your first auto landscape material. And if I take this material, open up any map where I have a terrain and just simply apply the material instance onto the terrain without having to create any texture layers to paint any textures manually. It will texture the entire landscape extremely quick. So this is the power of auto landscape materials. And now you know how to create your very first one. So you can get started texturing huge landscapes. Now, of course, this material still has a few problems, such as you need to adjust and control the tiling of each texture. And this is just the beginning of an auto landscape material. But all auto landscape materials need the following. You need to automatically spawn foliage on certain textures on the landscape. So if you wanted to have grass, bushes, and trees to spawn on the grass texture, and then maybe rocks and twigs on the dirt texture, you would need to set that up. Your auto landscape material should have an auto texture that you can apply based on height instead of just slope. You need to be able to paint a manual texture layer on top of your auto landscape material so you can add detail 
or things like pathways and roads. You need to be able to adjust your albedo tint and shade so you can control brightness and darkness. And of course you need to be able to adjust the tiling. So this first outer landscape material is a starting point that you can begin to expand on and add to. If you want to learn and create a complete outer landscape material, I do have a complete tutorial course that will take you through all the steps and show you exactly how to do that. It is UE4 Outer Landscape Material, the complete guide to creating and using procedural outer landscape materials. So if you want to take this first outer landscape material and expand on it and build to create a complete outer landscape material, download the tutorial course. You'll find the link in the description box or if you are on the blog post, you'll find the link there as well. Or you can go directly to worldofleveldesign.com slash store. So get the tutorial course and start texturing huge open world landscapes very quickly. Download the course and I'll see you in the next video.